joining us today is Thomas Lamb, the CEO of Myriad Uranium Core, listed on the CSC with the ticker M, also to be found on Frankfurt and the US markets. Well, Thomas, thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm fine. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Well, it's good to be speaking to you for the first time. I think perhaps could you just start us off by giving us a bit of an introduction to the company, the high level overview, if you like. So Myriad is a is an explorer, but also a developer. Again, Canadian listed, but our projects are in the United States. We have two projects, one in Wyoming and one in New Mexico. Those are two of the best mm -hmm. jurisdictions to be in. The Wyoming project is called Copper Mountain. Mm -hmm. We believe it's because of the color of the, the hills at sunrise and sunset. But it's okay. a big uranium project. In the 1970s, Union Pacific spent 85 million U.S. Uh, today's dollars drilling 2,000 boreholes, identifying seven okay. deposits, 15 prospects that uh, are kind of okay. deposits in, in waiting, just need a bit more work. And uh, okay. they, were, they designed a large-scale uh, conventional uranium mine that was going to begin okay. operating and producing in 1983. It's a big project, okay. and I look forward to telling you more, more about it. The second project is New Mexico. It's called Red Basin. About a thousand boreholes. It's a big basin that is roll front sandstone that'll be in situ recovery largely. Okay. Uh, we've got some great grades there. Okay, good. Okay. So New Mexico is the ISR. Is Wyoming more the flagship one? Wyoming is the flagship. It's it's okay. a huge project um, and it, it has three different types of mineralization and it's very large scale. Yep. Well, you said there that um, so 85 million in today's money was spent uh, historically on this 15 prospects, and actually a mine plan was indeed um, yeah. designed. So, can you tell us a bit about the history? Not not too much, but just I want to get a general sense of um, yeah the scope, sure. the scale of it, the scope, and, uh, and why it didn't go into production. Absolutely, uh, it was discovered in the 1950s by a geologist named Jim Davis. He was just a college kid. Um, and he's now, fast forward to today, he's uh, on our advisory board. Uh, okay. Yeah, fabulous. He ended up general manager of Union Pacific Railway's uranium subsidiary, Rocky Mountain Energy. And again, they, well, Jim Davis discovered the first uranium deposit. He's very modest. He, he, he might uh, say that he didn't, but he did. It's called the Arrowhead Mine. It produced half a million pounds in the 50s and 60s. At a nice grade, 0.15 percent Cold War era mine, and there were some other mines at the project. So it's a known uranium project. Fast forward a couple decades, Union Pacific subsidiary Rocky Mountain Energy came in, decided this is great. Uh, they did a lot of drilling in the easy to, to access places. Actually, the whole whole area is fairly easy, and mm -hmm. uh, they hit the jackpot. Large scale, they were going to produce uh, the the initial mine plan, 15 to 30 million pounds across six pits, uh, it was going to be open pit. Um, and 1979, they had a feasibility studies done. They were going to start production in 1983. Something happened in 1979, the three mile Island nuclear accident or incident in Pennsylvania. And that really shut down the entire U S uranium sector. Very few exceptions. So that's what happened. That's what happened <coughs> since then. The project has had divided ownership. Last uranium cycle, the key area in the center, the main that was that's the main pit in, uh, under uh, Union Pacific's mine plan, had divided ownership. It was it was sort of owned 50-50 by uh, the predecessor to Encore Energy. People know Encore, and then another company called Strathmore. So we we were the first group that has uni unified ownership of the project, and okay. we're we're advancing it. Um, it's very exciting. I look forward to telling you more about the uh, uranium endowment estimates too. Big. Well, let's go into that then. What what do you know at the moment then? Um, sure. And where can it go? So this could be one of the largest uranium projects in the United States, definitely. Right. We recently put out a news release uh, two weeks ago uh, about a... U.S. Department of Energy study from 1982. So this is after the, where the project was just winding down. We discovered this large study that had access to all the historical data, a massive amount of data that estimated 
that the uranium endowment of a central area called the control area that is centered in the center of our project has 245 million pounds, an estimated 245 million pounds down to 600 feet depth, okay. not including anything deeper. A larger area, over 600 million pounds, 655 million pounds, uh, okay. again, down to, down to 600 feet. We have 70% of the acreage of that smaller area uh, of the, of the, that I mentioned and 29% of the other area, but, but, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, we know what we're doing. We've got, uh, um, we know, anyway, but good stuff is coming in that regard. This is a huge uranium endowment. Um, if you compare, uh, the projects, uh, this would be mind blowing. We'd, we'd have to, we're, we're going to have to do additional drilling, a uh, significant amount of additional drilling to try to, confirm those pounds. Um, okay. We also have deeper uranium. We've uh, recent drilling or uh, our last drill program, we intercepted uh, uh, uranium down to 1,495 feet. Uh, another company that was there called Anaconda also encountered deep uranium. There's a whole nother thesis, which is there may be even much more uranium than all that, just a bit deeper. Mm. So exciting stuff. Okay, so that's where you sort of are now. Where would you want to get to then? If we sort of say where we are now is, let's say, point A and point yep. B, what, does, what is point B, a, a, a resource estimate, is it? Yeah, so it's a combination of things. Uh, there are, again, seven deposits and 15 prospects. We would like to advance them and shift uh, some of the historical resource uh, into the current category okay. and then also move... Uh, the other known mineralization and then mineralization is to be discovered up okay. into current categories. Okay. So we're, it's a combination of confirming the vast potential that it's already, we already know a lot of, a lot of the areas are, are really highly mineralized because there's all this historical drilling mm -hmm. largely know where the uranium is or, and where it should be. And so, yeah, so it's a combination of, uh, okay. of, of, of advancing that and then also bringing resources current under 43101. Right. Okay. So, so point B would be to have a nice 43101 taking into account historic data, but also new data as well. So what does it take to get to point B? I know you, um, you recently had a major uranium trading house um, coming on board and you recently yes. raised um, was it about 600,000? So not, not massive amounts, but you know, it, it's something. What do you need to get to point B? So we, we, we already had several million dollars in the bank at that point. And it just for detail, we did a small raise. It was supposed to be 125,000 or $150,000 just to accommodate. We have a uranium fund out of Zurich, Switzerland. That's very important. Okay. We we're just adjusting their, they, they wanted to increase their investment slightly. So that's why we did that small private placement. It ended up that management and other important investors decide to add too. So we actually didn't okay. need to do the private placement. Kind of came came out of left field. Okay, um, uh, but uh, we do have a fair amount of cash right now, uh, uh, two point six million, I think, approximately, and we do need more money to do extensive drilling, and so that will come in the future. Um, okay, we just announced today our plan of operations. Uh, large scale plan of operations for the entire project, approving 222 holes and initial 222 boreholes. Um, we announced that today. Okay. This is a huge step. Um, so, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to drill. So we have enough money to do some very interesting drilling and then okay. we'll raise in the future and, um, Okay, so enough money to do the, the the program you've you've announced then, um, yep. and that, um, and then you'll have to raise a bit more to get to the resource. Is that right? Okay, we don't know yet, uh, and, and in fact, I'm it's supposed moving, to, yeah. I am supposed to not say uh, how much drilling uh, we're going to need because the, the geologists okay. uh, say you know. Sure. Okay. However, right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> dozens of holes will be required to begin to move significant amounts uh, into the, into a current category. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it'd be a mix, mix of diamond and RC holes. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And could you perhaps just take us through um, just the rough sort of timelines, if you like, of, of that, of that program, what we're looking at, what can the market look out for? Yeah, I think we'll, 
we, we just put out this big announcement, uh, another announcement. So we, we announced the plan of operations, the large scale drill permit, 222 holes. Today, a few weeks ago, we announced this mass, this study that uh, uh, assessed that there's a huge uranium endowment and the potential is even bigger than we ever, and even Union Pacific ever understood. Um, we're going to get that information and we're assimilating it into our systems. We have uh, okay. AI on, you okay. know, cloud. And so this can take a few months. We're evolving okay. our targeting. And I think we'll probably be looking at drilling in February, March instead okay. of, instead of in the next month or two. Okay. Um, so February, March and, okay. uh, and then hopefully we're off to the races and, uh, okay. There's a good chance the mark the uranium sector will be cooperating too. It's already warm, quite warm. Maybe it'll be red hot. Good, 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 good. Okay, so now through the end of the year is is really it's planning effectively for for that program. Really, really finalising the details there. Um, Correct. Are, yep. are you active on the other pr uh, project in the New Mexico Red Basin one um, as we head into the last quarter here? We, we are doing some uh, very high resolution geophysics. Uh, that's going to start okay. in about six days. So that's the next step across that project area. Right, right. And then uh, we'll get those results and we'll make the plan for uh, next year. What you want to do next year. Okay, good. Just yeah. finally then on the AI element, that's quite interesting. You know, if you can say a little bit about how you're, how you're sort of utilizing that. I mean, every day that gets better and better and better, doesn't it? Oh, amazing, mind-blowing. So I'm, I'm myself, I'm a lawyer, finance guy by professional background, and I use the AI up Granted, I've been in the mining business now long enough, several decades, that I know enough um, to, you know, understand some things. I use the AI all the time, all the available commercial tools, the professional accounts. But our geologists, you know, geophysicists, et cetera, we, we take huge amounts of paper-based and, and analog data, maps, uh, documents, reports, and we scan them and we put them into, first of all, you know, in the cloud, we upload them. But AI systems that are specialized for mining companies are getting very powerful. We can, we can query this huge, thousands of documents that relate to our project, historical uh, documents and maps, and they overlay each other. And the AI can move things around so they line up perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's a fabulous tool. Uh, we're so excited about it. Um, amazing what it can do with geochemistry to... Uh, if you, you can cool. just upload tens of thousands of uh, cells worth of uh, geochemistry and it'll, yeah. it'll uh, give you so many insights. It's incredible stuff. Good, good, good. Well, hopefully we can go through that, uh, that plan maybe towards the end of the year if it gets finalized or early next year before you start drilling just to really look at what you're going after and how it will look as you, as you yeah. just before you start getting into that. Just, just finally, just to leave investors with something maybe to, to keep in their mind, I mean, do you, are you going for a particular target here? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it tricky to say? Um, just to try and understand if, if we can, um, yeah, the sort of what's on offer. And so you said it could be one of the biggest or the biggest uranium project in North America. That's right. We have on our, uh, we have on our PowerPoint uh, targeting 100 million pounds plus in Wyoming right. and New Mexico. It, it, now, with our news release of a couple of weeks ago, maybe we have to up that to 200 million pounds plus. Um, okay. So, uh, in terms of a resource, uh, whether it's, in, you know, inferred and indicated categories, we're probably looking at five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 million pounds as a, as a more near term target. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, uh, confirming the potential, uh, in the surrounding areas with additional drilling, we know where to drill now, thanks to some of these, the latest information and then, uh, some, a lot of historical data too. And then we can try to get up to the hundred million mark and beyond. Something else could happen. We could drill deep, do more deep drilling, hit more uranium, and then that's going to really crack this thing wide open in a okay. wild way because we might have what's called unconformity uh, yeah. mineralization, okay. which is like uh, Athabasca. And that's the real blue sky here. So things could get really crazy for us. Yeah, okay. And if you do get to that kind of style, what's it like to progress a project like that? I mean, is it is it sort of fairly, it's going to be, I guess, quite capital intensive, but is it easy to attract that capital for that kind of project? Yeah, we are in, so first of all, uh, for those of you who don't know, uranium 
globally is in, there's a big supply deficit. You know, world produces 160 million pounds, consumes 200 million pounds. Inside the U.S., they produce very round number, a million pounds a year, consume also very round 50 million pounds. So that, okay. and the, the political personality uh, of the White House is to produce everything inside the U.S. right now. Yeah. Huge amount of money flowing into that. There's federal support, state support, uh, private equity, venture capital, software companies, you know, data and AI, small modular reactors, micro reactors. Everybody now understands that they're going to have to produce more and more uranium inside the U.S. It's almost a mandate. You want to be, you know, so the answer, the, the long answer is investors are looking for exactly what we have so in, and already. And then if we have a lot of uranium deeper, that is anything like unconformity and my ge- our geologist is probably going to tell me to not, not go too far down the unconformity road because it's uh, speculative. But yeah, it's a real thesis that, that we're not the only ones that have, have thought this real possibility. The money will be there. We, you know, we, we're getting calls already um, that just people are very excited about the, the potential. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to introduce us to the company and the, the prospects today. Thomas Lamb, the CEO of Myriad, Myriad Uranium Corp. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.